Hi folks and welcome to part two in this sketching animals course. If you've missed part one, I strongly recommend that you start with that because I cover some really important basics and fundamentals about getting your proportions right, your shapes right, so that you can draw pretty much any animal that you want to draw. I'll link to that part one in the description as well as part three as well so you can find them nice and easily. So in this tutorial, we're going to be sketching a horse and it's not quite what I would call a portrait. Um, but it's not a full body either, it's somewhere in between. And we're going to be drawing this from scratch, so we're going to look at how we get the facial features in the right place and the right proportion of course, and then we'll be adding some shading, but with quite a loose and sketchy uh, style. You'll find a link to the reference photograph in that description as well. And if you enjoy sketching, but sometimes, like all of us, you struggle for ideas and inspiration, then you might want to check out my guide, it's called 101 Free Sketchbook Ideas, and it's designed to save you lots of time looking for reference ideas, reference material, and it's also going to give you some different sketching challenges as well, hopefully some inspiration that you can use in your own sketchbook. So check out the description, I'll link to that as well. All right, so enjoy this tutorial, and then I will see you hopefully in part three. So where do we start with this drawing? What are the initial marks that we put down to give it the best possible start? I think this is a really important question because for a lot of people, this blank white piece of paper staring back at them in the face is really quite intimidating. What I would say to you is if you are lacking in confidence, if you are at all unsure about where to start a drawing, always go back to your simple basic shapes. Start with those simple basic shapes and then work from there. Now the caveat is that you don't stress over getting these basic shapes perfect. In the perfect place, the perfect proportion, the perfect size, they're not gonna be perfect and they don't need to be. That's not the point of them. The purpose of these simple shapes is to get a composition that is in approximately the right place on your paper, the right size, that's a really big help. And from there, it's giving you a skeleton that you can then mold and you can play with through other compositional techniques to get a more accurate drawing. The shapes that I put down for this, you know, when we go through this lesson now, they're not gonna be perfectly accurate at all, and they don't need to be. They just need to give me a good quality start so that I can then have something to work with and make references to. Okay, so the first basic shape that I see in a horse's head, particularly a profile like this, is a, an oval or a sphere that incorporates this part of the jawline here. Okay, that one there. I've been lucky enough to draw quite a few horses. My wife's got a horse. I seem to have been around them for quite a few years now. And this is the one that I am drawn to. You might see something different. You might want to put this in as a big triangle, but this is the one that I'm going to go with. If you're not sure, maybe you can give that a try as well. Okay, so before I do anything, holding the pencil right towards the end, nice long nib, I'm going to just roughly put in where I want my composition. Always good practice, I want to get it nicely centered on the paper, a little bit of breathing space up and below, but I've got to make sure it fits on for you on, uh, at home on camera. So I'm just looking at this top line here, not concerned at all with getting it accurate. All I'm just thinking about is, where do I want this horse's head to be? There's a little giveaway, the circle that I'm, I'm drawing in there, you're going to see that in a moment. So very, very simple shapes, not worried about proportion or anything other than is it nicely placed on my paper, does it fit on, have I got a little bit of breathing space, uh, you know, up at the top here, the ears are going to come up here aren't they, so really I probably need to get this neck, this top neckline down here a bit, so everything comes down a bit here. Very, very easy adjustments to make because I haven't committed to really precise contour lines. I haven't spent time putting those precise contour lines in. So how is that looking? I want a little bit more space on this side compositionally because the horse is looking that way. I could actually move the whole thing over to the left and have uh, space on the side. Compositionally that's quite nice to have breathing space the horse is looking into. But for the purposes of this lesson and so you can see it you know, a little bit more nicely on camera, we'll keep it a bit more centralised. Okay, and then from there, if you want to, you can take your kneadable eraser and just tidy things up a little bit. You don't have to go too much. Now, I have just alluded to one of the key basic shapes that I see in a horse's head that is in profile view like this, so side on uh, as it is in this photograph. And that is the oval or the sphere that encapsulates this part of the horse's jawline and goes up into the eye area. 
So that sphere there. Now you may not see that straight away. You might see a more obvious basic shape as a triangle, a truncated triangle that's chopped off at the end there. And that's fine. You've got to go with whatever your eye sees. If you're not sure or if you want a real definite starting point, then follow along with me. I'm going to use this, this initial sphere, this circle here. Now I could just put this circle down as you know, a basic shape in approximately that position and move on and it would all look very straightforward. But there's something that I'm seeing just almost unconsciously within this shape, by drawing this shape, that I think is really important for you to know. And that is the size of this circle. Because the size that you put down this in first basic shape, this first mark, is going to dictate the size of everything else. If I place it down quite small, but in my head mentally I'm thinking this is how big my overall drawing is going to be, everything's going to be out. You're going to start stretching things to make them fit, or you, you know, you're going to end up with a drawing that's too short on one side and too wide on the other side. So you need to think about what size this initial shape is going to be, comparative, roughly speaking, comparative to your overall drawing. Now, it doesn't take a lot of practice before this becomes quite instinctual. So I could put that shape down and instinctually know that roughly, maybe a little bit bigger, that's going to be the right size. But when you're learning this process and when you're learning how to draw, you've got to take a little bit of time and just think about the size of this shape. And the best way to do that is just ghost your pencil over and think, that's the size there, and then draw another one next to it roughly the same size. And think about how much of the rest of the horse's body would this oval take up. So it doesn't fill the space, because that would be too big. You couldn't get two in there because it would be too small to fit two in. So you could fit one in about there and then have room for maybe, say, half another half sphere there. On this side of the horse's head, you've only got a little tiny bit of room, maybe a third of the width of the, the sphere to get in. And these are not ruler measurements, these are judgments by eye, and they're always going to be good enough, okay? So you don't need to stress over getting them perfect. So let's just put down our initial sphere for that part of the horse's jawline. I'll make it a bit stronger so it's clearly, you can clearly see that on camera. If I was to make another one of those, so I'll draw it, I wouldn't do this normally, I'll draw it out just so you can see what I'm seeing. You can see that's roughly the same size. I'd probably get another half of one in where I've set the width of my drawing to be. Now this side here, look how much room I've got here. So I know that this side of the head really is going to be somewhere around about here, isn't it? So we set about half the width of one of these in this space here, roughly speaking. So mentally now, I know that my drawing is going to start a little bit further in. And that's fine because I was happy with lots of space on the right hand side. So we'll just get rid of that one. We don't want it too messy and it's just for demonstration purposes. So we've got that basic sphere in. The next marks that I'm going to put in are the top and bottom line. So I'm going to create a bit of a triangle. So it's going to be like a chopped off triangle to create the horse's head. So looking at the angle line, if you want to, you can get an approximate measure with your pencil just by laying it down. I'm not worried about any of these contours, any of these subtle contours here. I'm just taking a line and I'm extending that line too far as well. So one of the key things that you'll see a lot of artists do is they overextend their construction lines because it's too easy, very easy to make your lines too short. So if you were drawing a full body pose of an animal, for example, you're much more likely to make the body too short and the legs too short than too long. And one of the ways to avoid that is to overextend these initial construction lines. So the top edge, the line I've got down is too steep, okay, but not too much, so it's going to be something like this. Let's just do a double check on that. Okay, and it can just overextend that as well. Okay, and then the next line we can put in is this definite one for the neck here. So let's just extend that through and let's see how it would dissect this sphere that we've put in. So it's not in the middle, that would be there, it's towards the top edge. You can check the angle if you want to, but again, you'll find with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to gauge those relatively easily. Now, hopefully you can see what's happening here. I'm starting really, really general, not paying any attention with those initial marks to you know, things like proportion and shape and angles. Then I'm getting a little bit more specific, but I'm still staying really general. So I'm looking at angles, I'm looking at shapes, I'm looking at the sizes of things but I'm not putting in neat contour lines, I'm not putting in the eye and you know details of the horse tack or anything of like that at this stage. 
This is how you build up any drawing, particularly when you're learning how to draw. You start really general, really specific, and you get gradually more detailed. It's only right at the very end that you commit to those detailed contour lines. You know, the contour lines and the undulations within the back of the neck, the position and the precise curves and detail within the eye. That comes at the end. If you do that too early, you're committed to it. If it's in the wrong place, it takes an awful lot of discipline to erase that and start again. Let's take a look at placing one of the ears. Now, it really doesn't matter, I suppose, if the ear is a little bit too far to the left, too far to the right, or a bit too big or a bit too small. It's not gonna stop it looking like a horse. It's not gonna stop it looking like the horse that you're trying to draw. But if you get a little bit lazy and you place this, you know, in the wrong position, you don't observe and think about where it is in relation to everything else, as a reference point, it's gonna throw you off. So when you come to put in other positions and other details, the tack at the top of the head, the mane, even the position of the eye, and you're looking at distances and angles between these two features, if you haven't thought about where this E is gonna be, then it's gonna throw everything else out. So I think it's really important with every part of any drawing, even if it's a loose sketch, is to carefully observe, or just spend a bit of time observing where each of the major angles, positions, features, that kind of thing is gonna be. So the natural inclination is to place the ear right at the top of the drawing there because you're thinking this is where the top of my head's gonna be, I've put these marks in, so the ear's gonna be somewhere up there. But just have a think about the distance between this shape that you've put in. Look at the distance there, how does that relate to the, the total height of this shape? It's probably about half, isn't it? So about that distance there, we've got the ear here. So it's gonna be something, bottom of the ear is gonna be something around about there. What about an angle? If we took this down, so if we have our basic shape here, if we take an angle that comes down through the horse's head, it's gonna be around about the outer edge of this sphere. So the ear, I would say, is gonna be somewhere in that position. All I'm doing is putting it in as a basic oval. That's all the detail that I need at this stage. Now with each shape that I put in, every other shape becomes that much easier because I've got a reference to go from. So I can see this line here, is going roughly through the center of the ear, and then the mane comes down here. Let's just get the rest of the ear in, so just this little line here. And then the other ear, so we can place that in. Have a look at the height between the two. Is it a straight line? It's not, it's an angle, so this ear is slightly higher. Again, it's just a basic oval for now. Okay, we can put the rest of this part of the neck in. And if this is a little bit too narrow, that's okay, we can adjust that later on. So we're just getting it in place roughly for now. Now what about the position of the eye? So if we take an angle down here from the ear, so it's an angle that's sort of a little bit flatter than this one, but a bit steeper than this one. So running an angle down here and we know that it's right on the outer edge of this uh, sphere that we've put in this basic shape. Look what happens if I take this line and I take it on, follow the same curve. If I do the same with this, it runs straight through the eye. So I know that on this angle here and through here, I can triangulate that position so the horse's eye is gonna be somewhere there. Again, just a basic oval at this stage. I'm not worried about getting the shape correct at this stage. So let's just look at this top edge. So there's an angle there that is different from this angle here. It goes into the eyebrow here. So that means this eye probably needs to be a little bit higher up or this ear needs to be a bit lower down. So it's just telling me that this distance here is a little bit too long. If I put the, this part of the eye here, if I put it lower down on line with this, it feels a bit too low down. So there is an angle between those two but it's probably more there. So my eye needs to be somewhere here. Now, whenever you're drawing a horse and you see that it's got a head collar on, it's really helpful because that head collar helps to break the shape of the head into these really nice basic shapes. So you can see here, this is an oblong, this rectangle that is created by this part of the head collar. And it's quite easy to judge the shape of this rectangle. So we know that if it's too long and too thin on our drawing, we need to adjust that. If it's too short and too fat, we can adjust it accordingly. You've got this nice triangle shape that's created here. Even this triangle shape and this 
sort of funny oval shape, half oval shape here, are really much easier to see than a, a head overall. So whenever you see this horse's tack, you know, a horse has been tacked up and it's got a head collar on, you should make full use of that. So let's just put this top part in, so this top part of the head collar. So I'm just looking at this shape that's created here, this shape here. And now I can put in this piece here. So I'm just gonna put it in very basically as an angle for now. And then I've got the nose piece, and this is what's gonna help me judge the length of the head. So look at that shape now. How does it compare to this one? This part of the head collar here, where does it fall in relation to our basic sphere? So it is somewhere around about here. So it's just falling around the bottom of it. And then we take this piece here, and it's gonna go around. Let's look at that shape there. How does this shape here compare to that shape there? I think that's looking okay too. We've got this oval here for where the bit is attached to, the bit that goes into the mouth of the horse. So I can look, how does this shape relate to the eye? So look at how the shape relates to the eye. There's a bit of an angle between the two. It's not vertically down, there's a bit of an angle. So that angle there looks like it's okay. And then we've got this nice triangular shape. That's created there. And then this end shape, this, I don't know what kind of shape you would call it, but it's much easier to see then the length of this when we look at this abstract shape as opposed to trying to draw it in as the head as a whole. Now, what I want to do is break any of these curves into straight lines. So I'm going to see that as a straight line, straight line, straight line. Straight lines are much easier to judge than curves. So look at the angle of this straight line. Much easier to try and draw these as these individual straight lines than curves. So I'm looking at that one there. And then we've got the angle for the mouth that comes down here, so it's not far off a vertical line, you can see that, this line here, not far off a vertical line, and then we've got another little angle here that runs into that one. So how do I feel about that shape as a whole? I think mine's a little bit too wide, isn't it? So the width here looks a bit too much for me. Feels like it needs to be a little bit narrower, maybe a little bit longer then, Look at this break point here. If I take a line, it sort of runs from the ear to the eye. So it's maybe more here, this point. Okay, and just tidy that up slightly. So let's just put in a few more of the key marks. They all become so much easier, just like a jigsaw puzzle with each subsequent piece that you put in, everything becomes a little bit easier. And then we've got this part of the body. The observation process doesn't stop. So let's look at this here, look at the way this runs. If we were to extend the line runs through and into this, so it's gonna come around this sort of shape here. And then the hind quarters, the back leg, is gonna be in that position there. So yes, I appreciate that this is looking a little bit messy, but it really doesn't matter. I might have a few more marks on here than what I would do ordinarily if I was doing this drawing for myself, but that's because I want you to see the thought processes that I'm going through and that I'd like you to go through, and it's much easier if you put them, on the, in the early stages at least, if you put those thoughts down onto paper as you're going through them. Very, very easy to erase and to clean up with a kneadable eraser, especially when you're holding the pencil at the end and you're using the side of the, of the graphite in that way. It's not gonna leave any marks that you're gonna see at the end of your drawing. Even if you want this to be quite a refined, quite a, you know, well-shaded drawing, it's not gonna interfere with that in the end. So what I'm gonna do is just take the kneaded eraser and just 
skim it across the whole drawing, you'll probably be able to just about still see this. I'll be able to see it a lot more clearly than you can on camera, and you will too when you do your drawing. So we're left with this ghosted image, and we can start now refining this with more precise contours. So I'm going to start back with this jawline. Still got the 2B pencil, and with contour lines, what I always say is to break curves down into straight lines. So I can see a straight line here, I can see one here, I'm going to make this a straight line, and it's much easier to see those and then judge the severity of any curves with those straight lines in place. Okay, so I'm looking at this shape here, this little line, and then we've got the tack in here, so we've got this shape here. This piece here, so I'm just trying to ignore that for now. And then I want to think about the overall width, so Here's the top line of the nose. So rather than going round in this sort of fashion here, like a Formula One car doing laps, I want to do a little bit on one side, a little bit on another side, a little bit on one side, a bit more on the other side. And that way it just helps me to continually make that comparison for the overall width and the length. So the bit that I wasn't too happy with, too sure about was just the position of the eye. So do a little bit of work on that. So with this in place, let's think about this angle between the two. So the eye is going to be somewhere here. So again, I'm going to look at this as straight edges. So I'm looking at this straight edge, this straight edge down here. That one I can make a bit more of a curve, but look how it goes into a nice straight edge. And even now for the shape of this horse's eye, how do I feel about that? I think it needs to be a little bit deeper, doesn't it? So maybe coming down here. So I'm just imagining this as a shape. Even if I was to break that into a square or an oval, how does it compare to this one? Let's just put the, eye, uh, the upper eyelid in. Okay, and then I'm gonna just put this head, top of this head collar in. So all I'm thinking about is the distance here. How is that distance, how does that compare to the height of the eye? So if I was to take this shape here, I'd get one, nearly two of the eyes in there. So this maybe needs to be a little bit higher up. And if you look at it to where it is compared to the bottom of the ear, it was probably out quite a bit, so just pop it up a little bit higher and this is why you don't want to commit to detail right until the very end until you're absolutely happy with everything because the chances are you're going to have to erase things okay let's look at this part of the head collar so i want to look at the distance here from the eye how does it compare so it's about an eye's width maybe a little bit less so about an eye's width is going to be around about there so i'm going to keep this quite a loose sketch so i'm not going to put all the detail in of the different buckles and um, the straps that are on there. I just want to give an impression of that. So look at this distance here. So the distance from here to here on my drawing is almost as much as the distance from there to there. You can see that that's not the case. This distance is too long. So what I'm going to do is just adjust this bottom line. I feel that this shape is right, so that's okay. That's okay. So all it means is that this shape at the bottom just needs to come up just this piece here needs to be a little bit higher and this bit and that's then going to go on and affect how the width of this and this felt a little bit too wide before so all of these subsequent checks that you can make are much easier to make when you've got something in place that you can re refer to and cross-reference so hopefully what you can see here is this is the initial outline sketch that i had and this is where I've ended up with my final outline drawing. And that's simply because I was able to make checks and references of one element and one feature compared to another. And by doing that, making sure that the distances between things, the size of things relative to one another were correct, 
it means that the result is that I've had to shorten this. But I'm happy, it feels correct, it looks correct. I'm happy with uh, you know, the size and the shape of this part of the nose comparative to everything else. I haven't just relied on the, the marks that I've put down initially, I've continued that observational process. Okay, and then the nostril, which I always think is like a giant apostrophe. So let's take this line, look here, just to confirm. Now if we take the angle of that, we take it down there, what it's saying to me is that this shape needs to be a little bit bigger. And now we can adjust the neckline. So ever so slightly, the neckline's gonna be, you can look at an angle, but I think that's close enough. So this width here, feels like it should be somewhere around about there. You can do a quick check if you want, so do it on the reference photograph. So this point here to the, to the outside, let's find a measure that that goes into. So it's, if we take it up through the horse's head, maybe on line with this, it's around about that point there. So that width there. This is a good job of check because it needs to be quite a bit wider. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I think it's time to do a little bit of shading and we'll just keep it nice and loose. I'm just gonna to stick to the 7B pencil. We're gonna get a nice sharp point on that. We'll do the detail on the eye and then we'll do the rest of it quite quickly. So a nice sharp point on the pencil. Let's see how quickly we can do this and do it a little bit of justice at least. So I, what I like to do with the eye is just look at the outline first. I think, I think that is what most people would do. So I always find as well when, whenever I draw a horse's eyes at least, they always look like they're half asleep. There we go, that'll do for that. And then for the head, what I'm gonna do is separate the brown and the white. So just with the side of the pencil, I'm just gonna block this whole area in really, really quickly. Take it through with a head collar. So there's no highlights to speak of here. This is all a darker tone. And if there are, you can pick it out really easily with the kneadable eraser. There's one just on the nostril there. But this is just blocking it in really super quick. Okay, and then with the two separated, I can just start to put in a bit more detail now. So just looking for any shadow areas. So there's an obvious one there. And we've got quite a bit around the eye. So I'm holding the pencil at the end, you can see, trying to use the side of the nib. This is just a, a great way of covering large areas quite quickly, which can be, can be quite time consuming with graphite pencil. If you use it this way, it becomes more like a, a charcoal pencil in the respect that you can fill in those larger areas more quickly. This area is a nice one to do because this is just like your basic sphere shading, which I hope everybody's done from the Drawing Essentials course, comes in so handy because it's in so many different shapes. And this is one of them. So it's gonna be really quite dark around this bottom edge and then just lift the pencil off just to create that nice subtle transition. Oh, look how much darker it is around this bottom here. We can go really, really strong in the nostril, but just pay attention to the shape. So you've got a nice strong value in parts, and then you've got this nice highlight just around this bottom edge. So let's try and retain that. Okay, now the temptation with these, uh, with these straps is just to put them in jet black. But if you just defocus your eyes, you'll see that there's quite a lot of shine on, off the leather. 
and they're actually not a jet black value at all. Certainly some of them aren't. This one here, for example, you've got a nice strong value here, but this is actually quite light. This is probably lighter than some of the surrounding areas. So get your, your really strong shadow in first. It's as dark as you can go. And then do a little bit of horizontal hatch work on that. There's a nice light highlight on the end there, so we're going to leave that. This bit's really dark in here. I want that to be a lighter shape, so I'm just going to clear some of the graphite back just so I've got a nice white of the paper to work with. And then what I can do is look for the shadows inside. And that's the way that I'm going to define this piece. I'm not going to just do a line all the way around. I just want to pick the places that I can see the shadow. So this one on the top of the head, you just give an impression of the, the studs in the top just by leaving a bit of the white paper to show through. So we'll call that complete for the fourth study, this horse portrait. I've probably spent a good 45 minutes shading this in. Even with this soft graphite pencil, it does take a little bit of time simply because of the size of the drawing. If you want to do it a little bit quicker, you could use a charcoal pencil 
or why not just take a little bit of time and make a more refined drawing than I have. The most important part of this lesson is the initial laying out, the, the initial drawing out stage to make sure that you get your proportions right and that you get something that you're really happy with that looks like a horse. If you can do that, it's gonna fill you with that confidence and enthusiasm to then put in as much work as you want to into the shading side of things. And you'll enjoy it so much more because you know that you've drawn this from scratch without any tracing or without any grids. We've got one more study to go in this series of animal sketches. So when you're ready, please do come and join me in that one.